There's a lot of energy in the Department of Materials Science and Engineering at Penn State, especially this year. This year, our department home, Steidel Building, opened after a two-year renovation. There's tremendous excitement as our faculty and students moved into this renovated space and the high-tech laboratories and the very welcoming student lounges and other spaces for meeting and collaboration and interdisciplinary interactions have really energized our department. The interaction between experiment and theory is something very important for this department. Uh, so uh, experimental uh, investigation brings new questions for uh, computational material scientists. And, and we, we try as much as possible uh, to help uh, our experimental colleagues make the next generation of functional or structural materials. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of work going on in the, in the modeling of materials at the, uh, at the level of the atoms and the electrons up to the, the level of microstructures. At Penn State, we are working on developing new fundamental understanding. We also want to use those understanding to enable new technology that could shape the next generation industry. For example, we are interested in see how we can control the thermal and the electron energy conversion to develop next generation cooling technology that are environmental friendly and also have a high energy efficiency than current gas-based technologies. Uh, we, uh, we are also interested in using those materials that are lightweight, flexible, and for applications that are typically dominated by inorganic materials, such as at high temperature, can we use those materials to store the large electric charge for application in electron vehicle, aerospace, and high temperature electronics. We recently uh, stumbled over a very interesting discovery um, where we found a metal to be also optically transparent, which is a very unusual uh, situation. And so we started to delve deeper into this um, because there is no such thing than, than a transparent conductor. In this class of transition metal oxides, there's going to be a lot of discoveries to be made if the quality of the material is much better than we've currently been able to achieve. So that's a lot of excitement because it means that you will see new things that nobody's seen before, and it's at your fingertips. In material science and engineering at Penn State, we're really at the cutting edge on several fronts, including two-dimensional materials beyond graphene. Penn State was recently awarded a grant from the National Science Foundation to establish a user facility for the synthesis of two-dimensional materials. It's called the Two-Dimensional Crystal Consortium. We also have other centers focused on areas of energy and cyber science. We have a center devoted to additive manufacturing. Penn State has the DARPA-run Center for Innovative Materials Processing through Direct Digital Deposition, which is SIM3D. So this is a huge additive manufacturing center at Penn State that enables us to try out the different technologies for fabricating additively manufactured components with metals, ceramics, and polymers. We have $14 million in research expenditures in the last year, and in addition, the papers that we're producing are being published in the best journals, including science, nature, nature materials, and so forth. This really allows us to disseminate our work and to bring the advancements taking place at Penn State to the field and uh, to the world.